Hello guys and welcome back to the 2023-24 SDPN NHL season previews. Next up we have a team that's trying to get into that top tier of the Pacific Division and hopefully go farther in the playoffs in the LA Kings. A team that made a ton of offseason moves but is it worth it and how far could they go in the playoffs this next year? Well watch till the end to find out because we're going to be dissecting every bit of this offseason to see what's next for LA. But before we get to the preview, let's talk about today's sponsor in Sports Interaction. Get into the action and make your bet with Sports Interaction. The MLB season is getting closer and closer to the end and every game counts. Bet before the game or live and in play with all your favorite teams. Go to sportsinteraction.com slash SGPN or download the app to get started 19 plus and please play responsibly. Now for an LA Kings team that's looking to get past the first round, these offseason moves are pretty fascinating. Now, going on to the main one, of course, is Pierre-Luc Dubois, who they acquired in a massive deal with the Winnipeg Jets. But to be their second-line center and potentially first-line center of the future, they did pay a lot. But you can see over the past couple of seasons, a couple of 60-point years, he's a player that the Kings want to see the most out of. They want to see get around a point per game, especially with how much they're going to be paying him at $8.5 million. He's a player that is definitely going to need to rise up and maybe be around that 70-point range at least in L.A., then you also got the goaltending additions in Cam Talbot, which is an interesting one, 36 years old, and this last year of Ottawa was pretty bad, <laughs> an 898 save percentage. We'll see if he can maybe get back to that Minnesota days with a 915, 911, but we'll see in the backup role how he does. You also got David Riddich as a third goaltender option, which is not too bad, a 901 save percentage in 21 games Winnipeg this last year. Could be something interesting there if Cal and Cam Talbot doesn't show up. You also got the players they lost, and the two fours they lost in the Pierre-Luc Dubois trade, being Gabriel Velarde and also Alex Ayafalo, two guys who are great middle six players, especially Gabriel Velarde, players that'll be fantastic for Winnipeg so they do lose a little bit of depth there you also lose Jonas Corposalo who was great for the Kings after they traded for him from Columbus a 921 save percentage in the regular season looked great in the first few games of the playoffs but then kind of petered out with like, versus Edmonton he's a player that I thought would have been a player they re-signed obviously that didn't end up happening he goes to the Ottawa Senators and their goaltending is in a unique position. You also lose Alex Edler, who's been a solid depth D for them defensively these past few years, but another player that they kind of had to lose to make room for some younger players. Going on to the players to watch, though, the first one, again, without a doubt, is Pierre-Luc Dubois. Having him rise up to his best lengths will be most important for this LA Kings team. After trading so much for him and two quality players, a, pro a prospect and a second round pick, a lot is riding on that deal and a lot of depth was lost for them and i think for la the center situation gets a lot better their future at the center position gets a lot better and it'll be amazing this next year but we'll see how much of a cost it ends up being then we go on to the second player to watch in my opinion and this is phoenix copley for sure he has to be here because it's so interesting this la king strategy he got a 903 save percentage in 37 games last year looks pretty good at a 24 6 and 3 record just insane but they didn't have enough actual confidence in him to have him be the starter heading to the playoffs. That's why they acquired Jonas Corposalo and had him as their main starter. So to not even have that much confidence in him being the starter and then run him back a year later with Cam Talbot and David Riddich is a really interesting situation here. We'll see if it works out for the LA Kings. But as of right now, the goaltending looks very average at best and not exactly maybe what they needed. Next up, going on my third player to watch here, I got young defenseman Brant Clark. Drafted eighth overall back in the 2021 draft, Brant Clark has been lighting up the OHL in juniors. 61 points in 31 games as a D this last year. Insane numbers. And there's a chance he is in the AHL, but I also think there's a pretty good chance he's in the NHL this year. Maybe on that bottom pair, maybe on the power play. I forgot to mention that Sean Dursey, that's who LA traded again uh, to Arizona. So he is another defenseman that they lost, but have had some more space open up with Dursey and Edler gone I think there's a chance that Brant Clark makes this team and has that floor just absolutely running he can be an NHL defenseman now if you shelter him correctly and I think in a rookie season he could do solid there too on a bottom pair who knows what could happen but now let's go through and grade the forwards defense and goaltenders and let's start out here with the four group which is really interesting adding purely Dubois and I think it's a better four group than it was last year not by much because of the depth you lose but it's still solid they also acquired Trevor Lewis to potentially be on that fourth line too but there's a lot of options here not a lot of pure superstars but a lot of solid players I give the four group a B very solid in that center core is definitely one of the better in the league right now for sure then we go on to the defense which might be one of the more underrated decors in the NHL in my opinion 
Mike Anderson, one of the best young defensive defensemen out there. Drew Doughty has shown over these last few years, and he still has a ton to give. Gavrikov for the whole season will be huge. Roy, just ever prevalent, ever solid. You got Bjornfoot and potentially Brant Clark on that bottom pair. I'm not sure if that's how they'll make it happen. Maybe they'll have Gavrikov on the bottom pair with Brant Clark or something, or maybe they'll have Gavrikov with Clark. We'll have to wait and see. There's a lot of options, though, in this Kings decor, and with Gavrikov there for the whole season and the and the improvements of players like Bjornfoot and Clark, inevitably, this decor is looking pretty solid. I give them a B plus, and I think it's pretty underrated. Now onto the goaltending, and I don't really know what to think. <laughs> you got Copley, you got Talbot, you got Riddich. I mean, to me, I think at best, Copley, again, is around like a 905, 910 910 guy, but because of how solid the team is overall defensively, it's going to look a lot better than it is. I like Copley. I think he's okay, but I don't think he's going to be pushing the needle, and I don't think he's going to be the goaltender you need in the playoffs. I give the goaltending a C right now. I would love to be proved wrong, but I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they trade for a player like Connor Hellebuck at the deadline this year. And going on to the biggest question mark, my biggest question mark is, will the goaltending last for them? Will they be able to survive until the trade deadline when they inevitably trade for a bigger goaltender and a better goaltender? I'm not quite sure. I mean, Talbot as a backup, I think is brutal. Riddich has shown some good qualities as a backup, so maybe he's able to fill into that role. They got some versatility. They got options, but none of them are really speaking out they're not really jumping out and to me for la it's absolutely their biggest weakness as of right now though i still don't see them that holding them back from being a playoff team i see them getting around 102 to 105 points likely third in the pacific division but maybe they rise up to second or something for the la kings though the biggest question mark again is that goaltending and how they do in the playoffs getting past that first round is going to be vital let us know though are the kings a playoff team how far could they go in the playoffs as well what moves do you see them making within the year as well do they go after a bigger goaltender let us know all your thoughts of course hit that like button hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell if you guys are enjoying the season previews and of course share it with all the hockey fans you guys know online we will see you in the next one 32 teams in 32 days thank you so much for the sport so far you guys have been killing it drink some water have a great day and i will see you goodbye